everyone, and uh, welcome to this episode of Nerd Comment Commentary, where we get to talk about your comments on our videos from this whole week. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Matt Lieberman. And I'm William Haynes. Sometimes I start sentences without having any idea where they're going to go. I think you do that more often yeah. than not. Yeah. I feel like that's most, one of your best qualities, pal. Most, well, I thank you very much. A giraffe once sat in Africa for more than six hours. It loved it. Now, did you start saying a giraffe without having any clue No idea where, where I was going to. I just said a giraffe. <laughs> So uh, we got a chance to play Cards Against Humanity this week, and we asked you guys no questions, but you had this to say about the episode. Um, Lila Rose 89 says, I Googles the three-fifths compromise. It was an agreement reached. Is that reached. the present tense? I Googles the three-fifths compromise. That's the Currently. present tense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we did yeah. talk about the three-fifths compromise. No, no, no she's talking about did. I Goggles. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. Googles. No, I Goggles. I Googled the three-fifths compromise. It was an agreement reached between the North and the South for counting populations and deciding how many seats each state would get in Parliament and how tax would be That is untrue. I liked history the most in school. Oh! oh. Educate us, and Mr. I'm Haynes. there to uh, fight that. He's going to Google something. Uh-huh. Go, Will. Okay. Hey. Um, thank you to Lila Rose for attempting to educate us because we were confused mm -hmm. when playing Cards we're Against Humanity. And uh, while William Haynes looks that up, um, Cry981 says, I feel bad for the kids. I was right. She was wrong. I what? Googled it again. Read it again. The three-fifths compromise was a compromise reached between delegates from the southern states and those from the northern states That's during the said. 1787 United States Constitutional Convention with the giraffes in Africa. The debate was over if so, how slaves would be counted when determining a state's total population for constitutional purposes. Therefore, as I said, a slave is worth three-fifths of a person. Ten acres and a mule. Not a giraffe? Not 40 a giraffe. acres and a mule. Shh. That's a different Have you never seen equation. a Spike Lee movie? No. Oh, okay. They're pretty good. I was right. Leela Goggles go home. I think I think you both had correct things in yours. Keith S. J. writes, <laughs> Fuck Mountain is the ultimate trump card. You're right. You're right. You're right. Fuck You're right. Mountain. Yeah. Um, Cry981, I started yours earlier. I'm going to finish it. I feel bad for the kids who, while hearing it, Googled Bukaki. You spelled Bukaki wrong? You did. Um, so if you Google it like that, I don't know what's going to yeah, come up. Yeah, I want to know what comes up when you Google that Bukaki. Okay. De <laughs> Declan M says, guys, a homeless person is not just for Christmas. I have no idea what he's talking about, but do you notice that homeless people only matter to most people during Christmas? Like, it's Wait, what? Is that true? Yeah. Well, you know what? Now that you think about that, I like to do this thing at Christmas time where I go buy a bunch of $5 uh, Subway and McDonald's gift cards, and like whenever I see a homeless person, I give them those gift cards. But you I know, don't do that the rest of the year. You're the person populating McDonald's with homeless people. And Subway. And okay. Subway. You should give them Walmart cards, the, too. Um, There's somebody else you know <laughs> giving them Walmart cards. The two cards. top uh, search results for that spelling of Bukaki. The first one is a Yahoo Answers post. What is Bukaki? With like lots of question marks. And then the second one mm -hmm. is Tifar Bukaki, who is a level 30 summoner on League of Legends. <laughs> Amazing. Um, level 30 level summoner? Level 30, and yet, wow. and yet, Team 3v3, Team uh, Solo 5v5, and Team 5v5, no wins, no losses. This reminds okay. me so much of when Jessica Negri was here hmm. and she was explaining this to me. And it she all was sounded you like. All about and I'm it. just like, oh, wait, no. 331 wins. I thought you said 4,280. I thought kills, about it, and now 5, I'm hearing of it again. 42 assists. This would take my 57, improv. 57,129 minions. Even kills, farther. 8,489 neutral minions. This kills, doesn't make sense. And 581 turrets destroyed. If it you would jump make and sense. land a critical hit. <laughs> no, Peter Marquez writes, if you jump and land a hit at the same time, you get a critical hit for more damage. I don't see that comment. So Steve, Trisha, and I did a table talk called Fear Not. It's table talk where we talked about facing our fears and anxiety. Um, Stefan Fralick writes, uh, Trisha Hershberger's take on multiplayer gaming is exactly why I don't play multiplayer games. I could never pin down exactly why I didn't like multiplayer until watching this table talk. Thanks for helping me understand it. Right. You're welcome. You're game. welcome for me helping you understand that you're antisocial. Yeah. Well, no, it's because like <laughs> gaming time is meant to be like our time where we don't have to worry about our anxiety about dealing with other people. It was it was my one place where I was never judged. It's yeah. like I can go home and play Mario Brothers or play whatever I want and not worry about people making fun of me for not being good at it. Yeah. So I can just play and I'll get better at my own pace and this is my fun me time. But multiplayer, from the second you get in there, they're all like, oh, you fucking suck, kill your mom. Like all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Kill your mom. <laughs> yeah. This, it's crazy. That <laughs> kill your mom and fill them with black cum. What? That's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I've gotten that before. That's like that movie, The Time On Traveler. On Halo 3, it was it was nonsense. It was insane. And they were all <laughs> 12 are these years kids? old. Which what what 11 year old knows what cum is? You Maybe better all fill my mom now. with the right stuff, all right? If you're gonna fill my mom with something, What's you better be, be the, the right, right stuff. Wait, the stuff she wants? That What's movie that? Uh, from that? the 1980s oh, no. that won all those love? Academy Awards is about the Mercury astronauts. I'm telling these you 12 year olds. You better fill my mom with love. You, you fill my mom with goddamn out there, love. You better fill my mom with the right thing. Oh, and man. you better respect her too. Um, you know, we, we actually, we, we, we got really, really, you know, sincere and deep on this table we talk did. and a lot of people got a lot out of it and we really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> Kiro Hayase uh, writes, I, I, normally I kind of just sit and watch table talks, but I feel like I really just want to thank you guys for making this episode. Like it was timed Aww. almost perfectly to how I've been having somewhat of a bad moment, feeling a lot of anxiety about the future, among just other things about life. And like table talk usually does, this one made me smile again for the day. So I hope you guys can Yay. see this. But seriously, a big thank you to Steve, Matt, and Trisha. Love you guys. We love you too. We like, love you too. And honestly, you should thank the person that submitted that comment. Because we wouldn't have talked about that that yeah. day if that wasn't the it's comment. It's the truth. If they hadn't mm -hmm. talked about, if they hadn't asked us that, then we would never have talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, um, I talk to you guys all the time. You never make me feel nothing. Oh yeah. I uh, yeah. I challenge that. I think Steve makes you feel something every day. Yeah. Just giggles in Pressure his body. Pressure, you're behind. Um, Ryan Pugh says, I'm really glad to see that the stigma surrounding mental illness is starting to fade. After my own experiences, it's really nice and reassuring to see that more and more people are talking about it. It's no longer something that's shoved under the rug. It's true. Melina B. writes, great combo on this table talk. I must need a conversation about anxiety. I have social anxiety. I agree it sucks that the only way to get through it is to expose yourself to it. Hopefully oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people will begin to see more understanding, be more understanding of people who live with it every day. I mean, it's the truth. And the fact is that we're having the conversation now just is going to make such a difference for people God, in the future. you can future. still talk. I'm just... No, I'm just saying the next generation is going to be really lucky because we started having this conversation. I know. Chew and swallow. Um, Go to the land of chew and swallow. The great extent of the country is a further security. We've already <laughs> experienced its utility against the attacks of a foreign power. Why do we have the Federalist Papers over here? Because we're trying to be educated How people. is that nerdy? Why are the Federalist Papers over here? Tell them, Will. Tell them, Will. Tell them right to the camera. This country Tell was built right on there. the backs of the Federalist Papers, but Princess Leia didn't know. Okay. She can't tell me she one thing know. about that. Mm -mm. Was there an Xbox written in them? Nope. I don't know. Was the Whig Party involved in the creation? Yeah. We didn't land on the Federalist Papers. The Federalist Papers landed on us. <laughs> Praise logic. Read that one. Ayo Garrett says, everyone deserves to be happy. Tears, no joke, it hit me hard. I, do, I agree so too, mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. Yeah. Everybody deserves to be happy except douchebags. That's what it says in the Federalist Papers. Oh yeah, chapter three, verse article seven. Mm -hmm. As opposed to verse article four, which is like, man, I hate wasps. And article five, which is, I love guns. We did a video called The Weirdest Idea on Table Talk. We asked okay. you guys, not any questions, but nope. the topics were, what is love? Death, existentialism, sneezing, and coming at the same time. Mm. I was on this, and I don't really remember talking about that. Okay, oh, well, um, we talked about what weapon would we make, if we could make any weapon, and mine was a master sword oh, yes. that when you had full health, it would launch a laser that would make someone shoot, sneeze and come at the same time. That'd and be pretty debilitating. Later, I saw sniz, it was one of the terms in the comments, but I prefer snorgasm, because then you can give someone multiple but snorgasms. But snorgasm also sounds like it's boring. Like you had a snorgasm. I don't think any orgasm could be boring. Is a snorgasm- A snorgasm is a boring orgasm. Oh man, so like if you're in a relationship for like a really long time and you're not spicing things up and you're just kind of having <laughs> sex to maintain, you could consider those snorgasms. Boy, yeah. I really loved her I've so much, those. but she just gave me a snorgasm. Ugh, I think no. it's time to pack my bags. We've been together yeah. for 15 years, but you know what? Last night she gave me my first snorgasm, so it's time for me to cut out. Oh, is that it? You don't even work on it. You're just nope. out? Wait, but what? wouldn't was a snorgasm... snorgasm? No toys to wouldn't spice a... it up? Oh, no. But that would be... Oh, Wait, no. Trisha, Trisha, oh. that would be a borgasm versus a snorgasm maybe would come if one of you was asleep during while it happened. Boy, when I was asleep last night after having a lot of NyQuil, my wife gave me a snorgasm. Hmm. Yeah, that would be appropriate. Yeah. That's 
I That's opened up the dictionary, and the oh, first man. thing I saw was the word snorgasm. President okay. Mabumbo writes, It started with us, and I've sneezed, mm-hmm. came, and farted at the same. Whoa. At the same? What? That's at very public. Same? It was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Hold on. I like this guy. My partner just got off and said, okay. Then we watched Coraline, and I didn't speak for the rest of the day. That's a I sad don't, day. I don't get it. Oh, so, Who okay. said that? So, President Mabumbo was having relations with yeah, someone, yeah. a partner, uh, male oh, or female. Oh, sneeze came and farted at sneeze the same time. Sneeze came and farted at the same time. So expelling from three different orifices. The partner said it was okay, just got off and said it was okay. No, at least they got off. That would off. probably feel really nice. Oh wait, got off like they got off or they like dismounted? I felt like it was like they dismounted. Like they were oh. like, it's okay, it's fine. Let's just watch Coraline, you be silent. Oh, that's real sad. Be silent. Yeah, it is. That's a really like a like traumatic day. I heard it's great. (laughs) Pete Helio says anyone who sneezes slash comes at the same time should be saving a bundle on tissues. Uh, That's only if you have perfect (laughs) aim and they hit at the exact same spot. It's just right in the middle somewhere. (laughs) Right. So like every time you sneeze, you'd be like holding a tissue out to here, like trying to get each panel. Like you're like I don't know. You'd need you need like T shaped tissues. Do you know what I mean? Where you've got like a, a fold, you've got it's like it's like this long ways and then this ways. So it's shooting into a thing that can be captured, and then your nose snot is shooting that way, and then you can just kind of fold it together. Do you know what I just pictured? What? If like you had like tissues, but you didn't have your miraculous contraption that catches multiple things, and you had to catch one then the other, which would you catch first? Say that again. Okay, so you have a handful of tissues, okay. and you know you're gonna sneeze and come at the same time. Oh, which do you catch do first? You, which do you do you catch this and then go clean up this mess? But then this mess is all well, over. It's like which or one? do you catch this mess and then try to? Well, if it? you sneeze, it's also gonna be all over. I say you clean the sneeze first, and you you then you, you deal with then that. you deal with that because it, the sneeze you've got like germs, and this is just like almost chills. You guys are disgusting individuals. All right. <laughs> I'm just I didn't wondering. Come on this. What you should do. I didn't come on this to come. But you were on the original episode with coming and sneezing at the yeah. same time. I might have been the one to bring it up. <laughs> um, Here, what do you want to read, Will? Oh, uh, read this one from Pi 33. Did you just, did you have a problem? No, it's that's the I name. I think he just <laughs> ba- borgasmed. I did not have a borgasm. <laughs> no, it's Pi... I don't see that. Pip, 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 33. Who says? Sometimes I write comments and then delete them. I didn't this time. Well played, 33. Why not? Why? It's anonymous. Unless his name is actually Papai 33. Yeah. Write something nice, Papai 333, and we'll all appreciate it. Justin Hoskinson says Lee Newton and Matt Lieberman, the two people in in the source fed offices that death attempted to collect multiple times before just saying, Fuck it, I have more important things to do. Let me also add to that comment, Joe Barada, who has almost died oh, at least yeah. 30 times. When did Joe almost die? Oh. Like, when did Joe? When did Joe not almost die? Yeah. Joe has stories for days about this one time he almost died. Like, you know how, like, in American Pie, it's like, this one time at band camp? Yeah. That's Joe's, this one time when I almost died? He, infinite stories. But I assume that this is, like, because he was, like, out in nature doing yeah. some form it's like of, random like, Montana no, extreme sport. It's, it's 100% his fault every yeah, time. Yeah. Okay. But well, that's he's different. almost died so many times, yeah. but manages to live through it. That's every different. Day. That's, like, courting death. That's like saying, hey, Dad, <laughs> I'm going to do this thing. See, that's why Joe yeah. has a grappling hook in his car, just in case. Just in case. I have my grappling know. hook on my bookshelf. Okay. You won't need it. No. No? Marie Pettit says, weird. I sneezed a lot while watching this. That's, it's like, you know what they say, you know? If you see someone have a snorgasm, then you too will also have a snorgasm. Is that what they say? Yeah, I went to a museum once where they showed video of people having a snorgasm, and you sit in this chair and you what realize did it that like? you're going to have... It was, well, it was like... <laughs> and then all of a sudden I went... <laughs> and I just kept watching, and it was more... And then my friend came in the room, and then they were like, "What's who?" And they're like, "Oh no, it's very I just, mild." Everybody is snorting as it's, it's very mild. Kind of in the, the sweetest, most polite way. No, because a sneeze, uh, like uh, to me, a snorgasm is 
Yeah, but Will was at the museum. You need attention. Will was at the museum, and that's not what happened. It was a who, who, who. Wait, but like, is it just like dripping no, down? No. A real snorgasm you can have. Does it in just your drop room out like yourself. an ice cube? That's like so pleasant. Yeah, a it, sneeze is an involuntary yourself, convulsion. Who? Yeah, when I'm in the room, it's even quieter than that when I'm by myself. It's more like a like that's <laughs> top. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try you. I don't think it's gonna work. But I'm gonna try starting a sentence without knowing where oh, it's going. Oh, go, let's go, do it. And right, see what's right. gonna happen. Get it, girl. Um, Spider-Man, Mr. Potato Head, walked into the blue room and said hello to Africa. Exactly. Give me one. Is that? I'm you just did it. How are you gonna put the red sap in the top of the and the flat? And then. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of Nerd Comment Commentary. Oh, we have to give a shirt. We have to give away a shirt because we do that here. We're going to give it to Carol Hayasi for coming claim about how things aren't going well in his life and being grateful for that table talk. We're real happy that it helped you out, dude. And we hope that things get better. And we're also going to give you one of these amazing t-shirts from FHP. Wonderful. Signed by everybody that's here. Everybody that's here. Everybody that's here. Um, no, I mean, our goal of this episode was really to finish before Matt finished his sandwich. So we're going to have to wrap things up now. We weren't supposed to mention the sandwich. So we're going to wrap things up now. Don't you ever <laughs> yell at Trish again. Thank you, Will. Don't you ever. I'm going to do nothing about it, but look. Because <laughs> we're in a professional Trisha, environment where Trisha, fighting is not good. Don't That's apologize to Trisha. Hey, wait. You don't. got a little crumb right here, babe. Let me get that for you. <laughs> I was going to get that. Let me get that for you. <laughs> don't you do it. Okay. You're hilarious. Um, so coming up this weekend, we have the new movie Thing Show. Uh, we're going to see Maze Runner. You can check that out on this channel later today. We've also got a source... We've also got a source with animated coming up. And a book club also on Maze Runner. So uh, if you either saw the movie or listened to the book on audible.com, you can go to SourceFed Nerd for all of your Maze Runner funness. I want to see the movie, and I wish I was in it. I want to play the guy. Which guy? Any of them. I want to be a boy trapped somewhere, because I, I think I know how to play that character well. Mm -hmm.